Welcome to this quick start video for the Modolithics Complete Library for Keysight Genesis. In this quick start video, we'll go over several topics. First, we'll explain what is the Modolithics Complete Library. We'll then discuss Modolithics Microwave Global Models, which represent a unique approach to modeling. Next, we'll dive into some example demonstrations to help you become familiar with the models. We'll offer some tips on using them. And finally, we'll also discuss the different Modolithics library options. The Modolithics Complete Library is Modolithics' premier product. It's a large collection of simulation models for both passive and active RF microwave components. The Complete Library consists of various types of models, such as microwave global models for capacitors, inductors, and resistors. We'll discuss these models in more detail shortly. The complete library also includes nonlinear transistor and diode models. Also included are system level component models for filters, amplifiers, attenuators, and more. The complete library also contains substrate property definition blocks for various substrates. And finally, S parameter file based models are also included in the complete library. Another benefit of the Modolithics Complete Library is that it comes with various example projects that can help users get up and running with the models. Let's now discuss Modolithics Microwave Global Models. Microwave Global Models are models for surface mount capacitors, inductors, and resistors. A single Microwave Global Model covers the full range of part values for a vendor component series. In addition to being part value scalable, microwave global models scale with respect to substrates and solder pads, providing designers with a great deal of flexibility. These models allow for simulation capabilities like statistical simulations and discrete part value optimizations. So now we'll demonstrate how to use monolithics models in Genesis. We'll explain the basics like how models are organized in the part selector and we'll discuss model parameters like sim mode. For this demo, we'll assume the Modolithics complete library is already installed and the license is properly configured. If you need assistance setting up your Modolithics license, please refer to our licensing video. So after you open Genesis, you should automatically see the Modolithics models in the parts selector. Now, if you don't see the models in the parts selector, you can run a script that's included in the installation. This script is located in the C Modolithics Genesis folder. There, you'll see a load mdlx.bat file. Run that and just follow the instructions. After you finish that, open Genesis again and see if the Modolithics models are in the parts selector. In the parts selector, you can see the models organized by both vendor and part type. For example, after selecting the Modolithics AVX library, you'll see a collection of models for AVX capacitors, inductors, and more. Similarly, the Mini Circuits library contains models for various mini circuits amplifiers, filters, attenuators, and other components. Now, if you want to search for models by part type, just click on the component library you're interested in. For example, if you click on the Modolithics Capacitors library, you'll see all the capacitor models from many different vendors. Other libraries include the Inductors library and more. Let's demonstrate further by looking at the Passive Plus library as an example. This library contains models for different Passive Plus capacitors and resistors. Let's select the Microwave Global model for the Passive Plus 0603N capacitor series and place it on our schematic. Again, Microwave Global models cover the full range of vendor part values for a component series. This particular model covers a capacitance range of 0.1 to 100 picofarads. 
We can then double click this model to see its properties. Of course, the C parameter at the top allows you to specify the capacitance value. Beneath that, you'll see the SIM mode parameter, which you should take note of. You'll see three different SIM mode settings. When SIM mode is set to zero, the model functions as a full parasitic model. With this setting, the model accounts for internal device parasitics as well as substrate and solder pad effects. This means that solder pads are included within the model. When SIM mode is set to 1, the model simply functions as an ideal model. Device parasitics, substrate effects, and solder pad effects are all removed from the model. SIM mode 2 is the no pad stacks mode. SIM mode 2 is similar to SIM mode 0. However, the one difference is that with SIM mode 2, solder pad effects are removed from the model. This allows you to simulate solder pads within an EM simulator. SIM mode 2 does account for device parasitics and substrate effects. Let's now demonstrate a model simulation. Here we have our schematic with the same passive plus model we've been looking at. Let's add 50 ohm input and output ports. Next, we'll add a substrate. Let's select 4 mil thick Rogers 4350B from the monolithic substrate library. We can go back to the model properties and let's set the value to 5.6 picofarads. We need to be sure to set the substrate to the 4 mil 4350B substrate we just specified. Let's add a linear analysis. We'll specify a frequency range of 50 megahertz to 30 gigahertz. And now we'll simulate the schematic and then add our graphs. We'll create one for S21 and you can see the results here. Let's create another graph for S11, and here are the results. Now we mentioned how microwave and global models are part value scalable, as a single model covers the full range of part values for a vendor component series. Let's demonstrate this by changing the part value from 5.6 to 68 picofarads. We can then look at the simulated S21 and S11 and see how the results changed accordingly. Let's also take a look at some of the example projects. The example projects are located in the C, Modolithics, Examples for Keysight Genesis folder. Note that the example projects are included with the Modolithics Exemplar library, which is a representative subset of the complete library. The exemplar library is a monolithic standard trial library. Of course, all of the same example projects are also included with the complete library. Let's open the low pass filter example project. Opening this project reveals a very simple low pass filter. The objective is to allow users to see the difference in performance when using monolithic's real world parasitic models versus ideal component models. You'll see these sliders that are used to toggle the SIM mode of the models. Let's first set the SIM mode of all models to 1, which is the setting for an ideal model as mentioned earlier. We can see the simulated results here. Now we'll change the SIM mode to 0 and take a look at the results. You can see the change in performance after setting the models to SIM mode 0. Let's also take a look at one of the nonlinear diode example projects. Let's open up the one called Example Harmonic Balance Power Sweep. This project contains this schematic that you see here. It contains a nonlinear model of an Infineon Shockey diode. 
this project is configured to sweep the input power from minus 20 to plus 10 dBm. You'll see two graphs. One shows the gain of the circuit with respect to the input power level. The other graph is called output power. This graph shows the fundamental and the second harmonic output power levels with respect to the input power. Let's now turn our attention to the model data sheets. Every Modelytics model comes with its own data sheet, which can be accessed by clicking the Reference Info button. Here, you can see a Model Features box, which shows the validated frequency range of the model and other information. Scroll down to find a technical note section, which tells you how measurements were made and more. And scroll further down and you'll find modeled and measured data plots for different part values using different substrates. As mentioned earlier, the Modelithics Complete Library comes with various example projects. In addition to the example projects, you'll see an app notes folder that contains several application notes. Also located in the C Modelithics folder is the documentation folder. There you'll find the user manual and the latest release notes. Finally, you can visit the support page on our website where you can review frequently asked questions and more. You can also see a list of all models on the Keysight Genesis page within the MVP section of the website. And don't forget to check out the literature section where you can find application notes, published articles, white papers, and more. Specifically, you may want to take a look at application note 76, which focuses on a unique capability within Genesis called Vendor Part Synthesis, or VPS. VPS is intended to help users quickly design circuits using Modelithics models. You can also learn about VPS by watching the Deeper Dive video, which takes you through a complete design example. And finally, here are the different Modelithics library options. First, there's the complete library, which we already discussed. This consists of Modelithics full collection of simulation models. The CLR library contains Modelithics collection of capacitor, inductor, and resistor models. Then there's the millimeter wave and 5G library. Every model in this library is validated to at least 30 gigahertz. Modelithics also offers single vendor sublibraries. A single vendor sublibrary contains all of the models that Modelithics offers for one specific vendor. We already discussed the exemplar library, which is a representative subset of Modelithics models. This is Modelithics standard trial library. And like we demonstrated earlier, the exemplar library allows you to run any of the example tutorial projects. And finally, the Select Plus library is a free, smaller subset of models that can be downloaded from the Modelithics website. Well, we hope you enjoyed this quick start video. Please let us know if you have any questions or need assistance.